Welcome to Honestly Speaking. This is your host, Hamas Najib. Today, Alhamdulillah, we are honored with three very special guests. I have Mufti Asr Nadeem al Sahib, my teacher on my left, Mufti Dawood Sahib, and Mohsuleiman Ahmed Khan Sahib. And uh, we are in Istanbul, Turkey. Um, we are going to have this podcast here. And with that, we will also have a travel vlog for you guys, inshallah. And Mufti Sahib will tell us a bit more about our journey within Turkey, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So as you uh, have already been informed that we are alhamdulillah today in Turkey and this is a uh, a blessed place. The reason why I am saying this because Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has a hadith about this place we're sitting today right now. Uh, it is reported in Musnad Ahmad Rasulullah alaihi salatu wasallam said that la tuftahunna al-qustuntiniyatu فَلَنِعْمَ الْأَمِيرُ أَمِيرُهَا وَلَنِعْمَ الْجَيْشُ ذَلِكَ الْجَيْشُ وَكَمَا قَالَ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ That Constantinople will definitely be conquered. And it was conquered in uh, 1453. So Rasulullah said that its leader will be the best leader and its army will be the best army. So I will inshallah show you today uh, <clears throat> some of the area of Qustuntuniyah. Uh, and uh, Kostuntunia is today now known as Istanbul. And uh, inshallah, today's uh, video will cover some of the historical places of Turkey, many places that usually tourists don't go. Muslim tourists who come here to Turkey, they should definitely go there. These are some of the very uh, historical places, even important from the Islamic perspective. So <clears throat> I'll take you outside. Inshallah, we have this. I'll take you outside and I'll show you uh, the, some of the areas of Kostuntunia. Or Istanbul. So follow me. I will be inshallah mixing up with uh, Urdu and English both for our audiences. So Amham is for Taris for him. And uh, you can see the whole city from here. MashaAllah, a great view. This is Bassforus Canal. ये जो सामने आप उधर समंदर देख रहे हैं, उसको मरमरा कहा जाता है. All the way at the end, that's मरमरा. And these ships are going to Black Sea. दूसरा जो side है, the other side, that is Asia. And right now we are in Europe. तो ये दुनिया की एक अजीब जगह है कि जहाँ यूरोप और एशिया का बिल्कुल मिलाप होता है, और हम उस संगम और उस मिलाप के ऊपर खड़े हुए हैं. So it's great to be here. अगर मैं कोशिश करूँगा कि कैमरे से आपको सामने दिखा सकूँ एक दूर एक स्ट्रक्चर है, उसमें आप मीनार देख सकते हैं, बहुत बड़ा डोम देख सकते हैं, and that is actually the Blue Mosque. Right in front of the Blue Mosque is Hagia Sophia, and you can see another structure before the Blue Mosque. That's Top Copy Museum. So these are the places, inshallah, we will be covering in our trip. We will be going to uh, Blue Mosque, Snumania Mosque. We will be, inshallah, visiting the Top Kapi, Hagia Sophia, and few other historical places of Istanbul. In this trip, we will also go to other cities. So we will go to uh, Bursa, where the, uh, the founder of Ottoman Khilafa, Osman Ghazi, is buried. We will go to Urtugrul's grave. We will go to Urfa. Shanli Urfa is a very historical place. Uh, that's the birthplace of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. That's the birthplace, birthplace of Mesopotamian civilization. That's where Ayyub alayhi salatu wasalam is buried a few miles uh, away from Urfa. So these are the few places, inshallah, we'll take you uh, throughout our visit. Jazakumullah khairan. Thank you for watching. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. First of all, I'm very excited to be traveling with my friends and my teacher. Alhamdulillah. It's a great opportunity from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And some things that I've been looking forward to all my life was especially the Sulaimani Masjid, you know, it matches with my name. I was very excited to always hear about it. I was actually confused thinking that it was the same as the Blue Mosque, but Alhamdulillah, now I can enjoy two different mosques, Alhamdulillah. And I'm also excited to go see these special places which are not commonly visited by a lot of people. It gives us that feeling of being exclusive and special and being able to go visit these things, alhamdulillah, with, the, with great scholars, alhamdulillah. This is the best company you can ask for. I'm also excited to look at the athar of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that they are kept in the top copy museum and also excited to see the Hagia Sophia and how it was converted again by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's fadl 
to a mosque. And there's many, many things. Time is short, but this is a few things that I'm really, really excited to see. Jazakallah khair and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair, Mohsin Iman. And now, Mufti Dawood, if you can uh, give us an insight of what you're looking forward to during this trip, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As Mohsin Iman mentioned, uh, emotions can't be explained through words. It's simply a matter of understanding and going out and being able to look at these athar that we one can only imagine, one can only dream to go and see these places. Like for example, in the places in Urfa, uh, where Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, was born, you know, we read day in and day out that we were supposed to follow the millah of Ibrahim alayhi salam, and yet we get to see the inception of it all. Uh, I ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to benefit from this trip and truly follow the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Jazakallah khairan wa It's on, honestly truly an honor to have such company, especially having Mufti Asir with us, um, giving us the insight of each and every single place, um, telling us about it you know, from a scholarly perspective, and also having um, such company as Mufti Dawood and Mosul Iman in, on this trip. Uh, I hope that I can benefit, and I hope the audience can benefit, inshallah. Stay tuned and stay with us, inshallah, and we will explore Turkey together, inshallah. Jazakallah khairan. So right now, we are in front of Hagia Sophia. We're in a place right in the middle of Hagia Sophia and Top Copy Museum. We are right now in Istanbul. Um, I have to share some of my thoughts about Hagia Sophia. Hagia Sophia uh, used to be once upon a time a church. It was built about uh, 1600 years ago. This place where we are right now used to be the Byzantinian uh, school of thought of Christianity's headquarter. So they made this church. Um, it was their holiest site. And after the conquest of Constantinople, Constantinia, they decided to move their headquarter from here to Russia. Right now, Byzantinians are in Russia, St. Petersburg, I believe. When Muslims came here, they purchased this church from the Christians. The transaction deed is still available. They purchased the church from them and they converted this church into a masjid. So a lot of people, they think that Muslims forcefully took over the site and converted into a masjid. That's a false claim. By the way, Christians do this all the time. They sell their churches. Today in America, in England, in many Western countries, they're still selling their churches to, Mus to Muslims and Muslims are converting those places into uh, masajid. So it's normal for them. So they sold this church, Muslims converted into a masjid, and it became the historical masjid for Turkey, Hagia Sophia Masjid. And what happened? About after the First World War, you can hear Azan in the background. After the First World War, um, Mustafa Kamal Atatürk turned this masjid into a museum. It remained a museum for a very long time. Lost, last time when I came here, it was a museum, three, four years ago. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. So I visited here when it was a museum. This time, Alhamdulillah, I came here and it's a masjid again. So the current president of Turkey, Tayyip Rajab Erdogan, turned this place into a masjid again. So we, Alhamdulillah, the Muslim Ummah was able to take our masjid back. So some liberal, secular uh, individuals who cannot tolerate any other idea but theirs, they converted this place into a church, sorry, into a museum. The liberals of the world today, the secularists of the world today, when this place was turned back into a masjid were so upset. This shows the level of their intolerance. But mashallah, it is our history that we, nev we never forget our places. We never forget our masajid. We get them back. And inshallah, we'll get every masjid back, bismillah ta'ala, just like we did this one. So, on the other side, right in the opposite, you can see, you can see here. This is top copy museum. इस म्यूजियम में ये पहले किला था यूज टू बी अ पैलेस यहां बहुत सारे जो उस्मानी खुलाफात है उनके हरम हैं इसमें एक बहुत ही जबरदस्त जगह है वो जगह है जहां मुकद्दसात रखे हुए हैं सहाबा इकराम की तलवारें हैं रसूलुल्लाह सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम की तलवारें हजरत अली की है हजरत उस्मान की है हजरत अबू बकर की है हजरत उमर फारूक की है खालिद इब्ने वलीद की है जाफर तैयार की है और भी बहुत से सारे सहाबा رضی اللہ عنہم کی تلواریں یہاں پر موجود ہیں حضرت حسین رضی اللہ عنہ کا جبہ ہے حضرت فاطمہ رضی اللہ عنہ کا جبہ ہے اور کچھ چیزیں ایسی ہیں جن کا تعلق انبیاء 
alayhi salatu wasalam say so next time when you come to Turkey in Istanbul you have to you have to visit this place this is I would say the holiest site in all over Turkey but after this inshallah will take you to places where usually tourists don't go so this is a very interesting spot where in one standing in one place you can see two historical places over here top copy museum which has which preserves the muqaddasat the holy uh, things that related to Muslim Ummah and in front of me once again you can see one of the historical masajid of the Muslim Ummah which is known as Ayah Sophia today so that's all for today inshallah jazakumullah khairan Sufi, great Sufi, Maulana Jalaluddin Rumi, Rahimahullah. He is the Sufi of the 11th and 12th century. He was born in Balkh and then with his father, he moved first to Baghdad and from there to Punia. And right now in Punia, Turkey, he learned uh, all four mazahib of fit in Baghdad, became Mufti there, and then he became the Mudaddis of a local madrasa in Punia after his father, Sheikh Bahauddin Siddiqui, passed away. This lineage is from Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq. Um, he wrote many books, but the book that caught the attention of the scholars of the East and the West is the book called Masnavi Monana Rum. It's a, it's a collection of his poetry, but it's on the philosophy of the scholar. And today, uh, I will just share one piece of poetry with the shara of Hazrat Hanvi Rahimahullah. Hazrat Hanvi Rahimahullah has his shara on Masnavi Maulana Rum in several volumes. And you will see the beauty when I will read inshallah. So the share from Masnavi is Zikr Gota Fikre Ba Fikre Tu Bala Kunat. Zikr Guftan Fikre Ra Awala Kunat. And Hazrat Hanvi writes Zikr ki Garmi. So when you do zikr, your fikr will become vibrant. So if you are dead fikr, meaning dead thought, then its remedy is that you put it under the heat of zikr. And then Hazrat Hanvi writes, Ihtazaz ke mana harkat mein ana hai. And this is the beauty of his sharh that he takes one uh, you know, piece of poetry of Maulana Rum, he explains it, he translates it, and then he supports it by the Quran and Hadith. So Hazrat Hanvi writes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِذَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْهِ الْمَاءَ اَحْتَزَّتْ وَرَبَتْ وَأَنبَتَتْ مِنْ كُلِّ زَوْجٍ بَعِيجٍ So Maulana Masnavi Rum is, is this piece of poetry, is the sharh of this ayah. Yeah, so that's uh, one uh, short piece of poetry of Maulana, Masnavi Maulana Rum and uh, it's amazing, and mashallah, it's, it's a very rich tradition, uh, very important book. You have to, you need to know Farsi in order to understand the actual work, but if, even if you don't know Farsi, the book has been translated in several languages, Arabic, English, Urdu, so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the to understand and get benefit from this blessed work. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Is waqt hum Turki ke ek shahar mein hain jiska naam hai Shanli Urfa. Iska jo historical naam hai wo hai Raha. Lekin Kamal Atatur ke baad iska naam Urfa rakh diya gaya. Ye darasal Sham ka ek ilaqa hai Arz Sham ka jisko hum Arz Anbiya के नाम से जानते हैं ये जगह इस एतबार से निहायत मुबारक है कि मेरे पीछे जो आप देख रहे हैं ये छोटी सी मस्जिद है और उसके बराबर में एक गार है अंदर जाएंगे तो गार नज़र आएगा पहले मैं उस गार के बारे में आपको बता देता हूँ कि वही हज़रत इब्राहिम आलतम की जाए पैदाइश है वहाँ जब आप जाएँगे अंदर देखेंगे तो वहाँ पानी नज़र आएगा हुआ ये था कि हज़रत इब्राहिम आलतम की पैदाइश के बाद रिवायतों में यह आता है तारीखी रिवायतों में और यहाँ के लोगों की जबानी जो हमने सुना है यहाँ के ओलमा की वो ये कि गार से पानी निकला जिसकी वजह से उनका जो ख़ानदान है 
वो फिर बराबर की जगह में मूव हो गया ये जो आप देख रहे हैं ये मस्जिद है इस वक्त और यही दरअसल हज़रत इब्राहिम सलाम का मकान था यहीं वो रहे हैं यहीं पले बढ़े हैं इसको एक ज़माने में ये सनेगॉग्स के तौर पर इस्तेमाल होता था यहूदी इसको इस्तेमाल करते थे फिर उसके बाद ईसाइयों ने उसको चर्च में तब्दील कर दिया फिर आज से कोई तकरीबन 1300 साल पहले मुसलमानों ने ईसाइयों से दरख्वास्त की यानी ये नहायत अमन के तौर पर और अमन के माहदे के तौर पर ये चीज़ हुई है कि ईसाइयों से दरख्वास्त की गई कि हज़रत इब्राहिम सलातम के तल्ल से तो हम ज़्यादा हकदार हैं इसलिए कि हम हज़रत इब्राहिम सलातम की मिलत से ताल्लुक़ रखते हैं तो उसके बाद वो इस चर्च को मस्जिद में तब्दील कर दिया गया इस वक्त ये मस्जिद है मेरे पीछे जो आप अगर आप ऊपर करें कौन सा ये जो पहाड़ है ये पहाड़ी सिलसिला दूर तक चला जा रहा है इस पहाड़ के ऊपर जो है वो नमरूद का किला है और वहीं पर हजरत इब्राहिम सलातम को आग में डालने के लिए आग जलाई गई थी तो इन शाम वहाँ भी जाएँगे उसको भी देखेंगे तो मैं सबसे पहले आपको कार में लेकर चलता हूँ पार्टी का वहाँ हम जाकर देखेंगे कि वो बहुत अंदर जाकर गार भी काफ़ी बड़ा है आधी गार तक लोग जा सकते हैं और आगे गिलास है और उसके बाद फिर गार नज़र आएगा और आज भी वहाँ पानी है जो पानी वहाँ है उसको कहा जाता है कि ये माए शिफा है यानी उस पानी के अंदर शिफा है और मकामी जो लोग हैं वो यहाँ से रोज़ाना पानी भगा कर ले जाते हैं इसकी अहमियत इस इलाके में ऐसी ही है जैसा कि जमजम की अहमियत है और तो 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 यहाँ पानी भरा हुआ है थोड़ा सा नीचे दिखा दे पूरा गार अंदर तक और यहाँ पर इंतजाम किया हुआ है किया हुआ है कि पानी जो है वो इन टंकियों से निकल जाता है लोग यहाँ आकर पानी भर कर लेके जाते हैं ये पूरा ऊपर भी दिखा दें कि पूरा बात किस तरीके से है अब जब हम यहाँ से बाहर निकलते हैं ये हजरत इब्राहिम की पैदाइश यहाँ से जब हम बाहर निकलेंगे तो हम इस तरफ ये एक मस्जिद आ जाती है यहाँ हज़रत इब्राहिम सलातम पले बढ़े हैं और वो पूरा इलाका जो है वो दरअसल नमरूद का इलाका है था और इसी जब इलाके के बारे में पुराने करीम के अंदर मुख्तलिफ आयतें आई हैं उनमें से एक आयत में ये भी है कि जब लोग किसी फेस्टिवल के लिए शहर के बाहर गए हुए थे तो हज़रत इब्राहिम सलातम चूँकि बचपन से शिरक से नफ़रत करते थे तो वो इसी जगह रहे तो उन्होंने कहा कि मैं तो आई एम फेड अप विद दिस इन्नी सकीम तो इसलिए वो फेस्टिवल में शामिल नहीं हुए वो इसी जगह ठहरे रहे और कौम उनकी कौम शिर करती रही तो आज हम इस नहाय मुबारक और तारीखी जगह पर आए हैं और बिलाशुबा इस पूरे इलाके को अर्ज अम्बिया कहा जाता है यहाँ एक नहीं बहुत सारे अम्बिया आए हैं उनका गुजर हुआ है यहीं पर करीब एक मस्जिद है जहाँ पर ईसातम ने उसके पानी से रजू भी की है वहाँ हमाम किया है हज़रत ऐब आई सलातम इसी महल में के करीब में एक महल्ला हज़रत ऐब आई सलातम का है तो इन शाला वहाँ की भी जियारतें करेंगे आज जजाकमल खैर ये जो खबर है अंदर जाने से पहले मैं इसके बारे में बता रहा हूँ तो का एक बहुत मशहूर तरीक है सिलसिला है जिसको शादली सिलसिला कहा जाता है तो शादली सिलसिले के एक बड़े शेर हैं जिनका नाम है शेख अली शादली ये उनकी खबर है और ये दरअसल तरीके की जो बानी थे शेख अबुल हसन शाजली उनकी औलाद में से आगे आए खलीलान तो ये मकाम यानी इस जगह हजरत इब्राहिम सलातम की याद में ये मस्जिद बनाई गई है लेकिन जो असल चीज़ है इस मस्जिद में मैं उस तरफ आपको ले हम हम 
दाखिल हो रहे हैं उस जगह कि जहाँ पर वो आग जलाई गई थी आ जाए ये शीशे का फ्लोर है यहाँ इस पूरे इलाके के अंदर पानी है तो जो तो किसी वक्त में आया होगा बाद में लेकिन उसके ऊपर इस जगह को प्रिजर्व करने के लिए उन्होंने शीशे का फ्लोर डाल दिया ये जो पूरा इलाका है और इसके नीचे आप लाइट देख रहे हैं पीली ये दरअसल इसलिए है ये बताने के लिए ये मार्क्स हैं कि जिस इलाके में जिस जगह दरअसल वो आग जलाई गई थी जिसमें इब्राहिम आलाम को डाला गया और हजरत इब्राहिम आलाम मुआजाती तौर पर जिंदा बाहर आए और कुरान करीम ने उस मुआजे को रिकॉर्ड किया तो यहाँ पर पहले ज़माने में ये मस्जिद बना दी गई थी इसकी छोटी सी महराब है फिर इस मस्जिद को एक्सटेंड किया गया और अब पूरी मस्जिद जो है वहाँ जाए अगर चाहें तो उस मस्जिद को मिला कर ये वो मस्जिद है कि जिसको एक्सटेंड किया गया और अब बाकायदा यहाँ नमाज होती है मुकम्मल आबाद मस्जिद है माशा लेकिन इसका जो असल जो तारीख है हिस्सा है वो इधर है जो हमने अभी आपको दिखाया इस वक्त हम जो उर्फा शहर है तुर्की का उसमें एक मस्जिद है इसको उलू जाम बोलते हैं और उस मस्जिद में मौजूद है इस मस्जिद के मस्जिद मेरे पीछे आपको नजर आ रही है वहाँ से लेकर इधर तक अगर दिखाए कदीम मस्जिद है बहुत पुरानी मस्जिद है सदियों पुरानी मस्जिद है और इसके सामने वो कदीम कब्रस्तान भी है इसमें जो सबसे ख़ास बात है इसकी वजह से लोग यहाँ आते हैं और जो बहुत सारे लोगों को इसका राज पता नहीं है ये जो टंकी है ये कनेक्टेड है एक कुएं से कुआं अंदर है मस्जिद में और उस कुएं की एक तारीख है तो उसके बारे में हम इन समझने की कोशिश करेंगे मस्जिद में दाखिल हो गए पुरानी मस्जिद है यहाँ पर इस तरफ दाखिल होते ही सदर दरवाजे से ये कुआं है इसमें नीचे देखें पानी नजर आ रहा होगा ये बड़ा गहरा कुआं है और मस्जिद की जो किबले के अपोजिट दीवार है ये उससे लगा हुआ है इस कुएं की खास बात यह है कि यहाँ पर हज़रत ईसा सलात वसलाम तशरीफ़ लाए थे और उन्होंने इस कुएं से वज़ू की और गसल किया हज़रत ईसा सलात वसलाम के जिसम के ऊपर एक शॉल थी वो शॉल इसमें गिरी और हज़रत ईसा सलात वसलाम ने उस शॉल को कुएं से निकाला तो हज़रत ईसा सलात वसलाम के जिसम की जो बरकत है वो दरअसल इस पानी में मिली है और तब से इस पानी को माँ शिफा यानी शिफा का पानी कहा जाता है तो मुख्तलिफ़ अमराज के लिए लोग आते हैं और पानी अपने चेहरे के ऊपर मलते हैं अपने जिसम के ऊपर मलते हैं पानी से वज़ू करते हैं वगैरह वगैरह तो ये बहुत तारीखी कुआँ है ये जो पूरी ज़मीन है पूरा इलाका है ये अर्ज़ अम्बिया है यानी यहाँ अम्बिया आलतम का आना जाना रहा है गुजर हुआ है इस इलाके में हज़रत इब्राहिम आलतम की पैदाइश है हज़रत ऐब की पैदाइश है तो हज़रत ईसा सलातम भी यहाँ इसी नस्बतों से आए होंगे तो उन्होंने इस कुएँ से वज़ू की है और तारीख ने इसको महफूज कर लिया तो मैं यहाँ आज आया हूँ अपने साथियों के साथ ये सदत है जो अल्लाह ताली की जानब से हमें नसीब हुई है फजाकल्ला इस वक्त हम उर्फा शहर की एक मस्जिद है जाम अयूब उसमें मौजूद है इस मकाम की जो खास बात है वो ये है कि ये मस्जिद हजरत ऐब आलाम की तरफ मनसूब है और आप यहाँ देख सकते हैं हजरत ऐब आलाम का जो मकाम और जो अहमियत है अम्बी आलाम में वो ये है कि वो अपने सबर की वजह से मशहूर हैं अल्लाह तला ने कुरान करीम में उनको साबिर करार दिया है कि वो अब साबिर थे यानी उनकी सबर की वजह से अल्लाह तला ने उनको यानी एक ऐसा मकाम और एक ऐसा मरतबा आता किया है नबूत के बाद ये जो यहाँ पर आप बोर्ड देख रहे हैं इसमें लिखा हुआ है द वेल्थ हजरत ऐब आलातम को एक तरह की बीमारी हो गई थी जो उनके सबर का इम्तहान था और साल हर साल तक के वो ऐसी बीमारी थी कि उनके स्किन के ऊपर इस तरह डिजीज़ हो गई थी कि उनके गोश्त के टुकड़े कट कट के गिरा करते थे तो लोगों को उनके उनसे उनके जिसम से 
घिन आती थी बदबू आती थी तो लोगों ने उनको अपने शहर से दूर बस्ती से दूर जहाँ पर वो कूड़ा करकट डालते थे वहाँ उनको डाल दिया था वो अपनी बीवी और खुद वो और उनकी बीवी वो यहाँ पर आबाद थे यहाँ तक कि उनके बच्चों ने उनको छोड़ दिया था उनके रिश्तेदारों ने उनको छोड़ दिया था तो ये वो जगह है इस अल्लाह ताली ने उनके सबर का जो फल दिया वो इस तरीके से कि यहाँ पर आप ये कुआँ देख रहे तो दिस इज़ द वेल दैट यू वाले यूज इस वाटर फॉर हिज स्किन डिजीज तो इस वक्त थोड़ा सा ये ब्लरी है शीशा आपको अंदर नज़र नहीं आएगा लेकिन बहरहाल ये कुआं है इसमें पानी है और इस पानी के बारे में ये कहा जाता है कि ये पानी है जिसमें अल्लाह ताला ने शिफा रखी है तो मैं एक चीज़ वजाहत कर दूं कि ये तीन मकामों में से एक मकाम है कि जिसके बारे में ये कहा जाता है कि ये मकाम अयूब है पहला मकाम ये है और दूसरा मकाम उजबेकिस्तान में है तीसरा यमन में है सलाला में लेकिन यहाँ के जो लमा हैं वो इस बारे में यकीन के साथ की हद तक कहते हैं कि यहीं पर असल में अयूब आलाम थे और इस बात में कोई यानी कोई मुस्तबाद नहीं है उसकी वजह यह है कि ये अर्ज अम्बिया है यहाँ अम्बिया आलाम का आना जाना हुआ है लेकिन जो मकाम जिस जगह एग्जैक्टली अयूब आलाम को डाला था वो यहाँ से कोई बीस कदम दूरी पर होगी आप देख रहे हैं ये एक गुम्बद सा बना हुआ है उसमें जब हम जाएंगे तो नीचे जीना उतर रहा है वहाँ पर हजरत अयूब आलाम रहा करते थे और साल हर साल तक रहे और यहाँ इस कुएं का उन्होंने पानी लिया पिया इस पानी को आज भी लोग लेकर जाते हैं और पानी के अंदर शिफा है लोग जिस नीयत से पीते हैं मुख्तलिफ अमराज को मद्देनजर रखते हुए अल्लाह ताला उनको शिफा शिफा अदा फरमाता है सो दिस इज़ द वेल दैट अयूब आलाम यूज टू ड्रिंक वाटर फ्राम एंड अयूब आलाम ही वॉज फेसिंग द मोस्ट डिफिकल्ट टाइम ऑफ इज लाइफ यूज टू स्टे हीयर दिस यू कैन सी दिस लिटल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर दिर इज अटेट इज गोइंग डाउन and uh, that's where ayub alayhi salatu wassalam used to reside and this is the well that ayub alayhi salatu wassalam used to take water from and by the way there are three places about which people claim that these three places belong to ayub alayhi salatu wassalam one is in urfa turkey right now where uh, we are in urfa the second place is in uzbekistan and the third place is in yemen salala so um, majority of the scholars of this area they are sure and they have evidence they say that Ayub alayhi salatu wassalam was actually in this region and this is the maqam of Ayub alayhi salatu wassalam so i will take you there inshallah where uh, to the location where exactly Ayub alayhi salatu wassalam lived along with his wife when he had uh, uh, when, when he was going the most difficult time of his life so you can see that this uh, humble location right now you see a lot of activities but uh, just take yourself back a couple of thousand years ago and see how ayub alayhi salatu wassalam was uh, living here alone with his wife in the middle of nowhere literally so let's go and see check it out so yahan hum jo hai niche utar rahe hain जहां पर अयूब आलाम थे ये एक शीशे की दीवार आप देख रहे हैं उसके पीछे ये गार नीचे अंदर तक जा रही है फ्लोर इसका थोड़ा मोइस्ट है यहाँ पानी नहीं है मोइस्ट है और इस गार में इसके बारे में कहा जाता है कि यहाँ अयूब आलही सलातम थे सो दिस इज़ द प्लेस वेर इज इन दाफ वे थ्रू इन द केव बट एन देर इज ग्लास बेरियर एंड बिहाइंड दिस ग्लास इज द रिमेनिंग पार्ट ऑफ द केव एंड इट इज सेट इट इज बिलीव दैट दिस इज द प्लेस वेर अयूब आलही सलातम फॉर सेवरल डेकेज एंड आज हम बड़े ही मुकदस मकाम पर आए हैं बहुत कम लोग इस मकाम के बारे में जानते हैं तुर्की का शहर है उर्फा वहाँ से अगर हम एक घंटे की ड्राइव ईस्ट की तरफ करें तो एक शहर आता है जिसको कहते हैं वीरान शहर फारसी का लफ्ज़ है यानी वीरान शहर अगर इसको वाज अल्फाज में कहा जाए ऐसा शहर जो वीरान हो हालांकि ये आज के दौर में वीरान नहीं है उस शहर के शुरू होने से पाँच किलोमीटर पहले शिमाल की तरफ नॉर्थ की तरफ एक रास्ता जा रहा है एक गाँव की तरफ उस पर कोई तकरीबन 
दस बारह किलोमीटर ड्राइव होती है वहाँ जाकर एक गांव आता है उस गांव में ये मज़ार है ये मज़ार किसका है ये मज़ार है सैदना अयूब सलातम का ये आप देख सकते हैं मज़ार आपके सामने है हज़रत अयूब आलातम के तल्लुक से इससे पहले भी हमने बताया था कि वो पानी का कुआँ के जिससे वो पानी पीते थे वो मकाम के जहाँ यूब आलातम को डाल दिया गया था उनका महिला और उसके बाद फिर उनकी तदफीन उसी के करीब हुई है हम अंदर चलते हैं हजरत अयूब आलातम की खबर है और इससे पहले मैं बता चुका हूँ कि दुनिया में तीन मकाम ऐसे हैं कि जिनके बारे में दावा किया जाता है कि वहाँ हजरत अयूब आलातम दफन हुए हैं उनमें से एक मकाम यह है और उसके ताल्लुक से यहाँ के केमा के पास बड़े ऑथेंटिक एविडेंस हैं आए अंदर ये हजरत की खबर है और हम इसको अंदर से देख सकते हैं Welcome back, and we are here from where we started, but at this time, ending our journey. Alhamdulillah, I think we had a great experience. We went through the Turkish lands, and we had uh, Mufti Saab explaining many things, as you guys must have seen. Um, so it's been a great experience for myself. Uh, just to finish things off, inshallah, I would like to ask Mufti Saab uh, his personal review of the journey and how he found the trip, and then we'll move on to Mount Suleiman and Mufti Dawood, inshallah. Yes, mashallah. Uh, it was a great trip, and I hope uh, that we, as a group, will do these types of trips again and again. Mashallah, inshallah, and uh, we have to just finalize our next destination before this video is over. I, I, What do you guys think? I think Musab, for now, the next destination is a secret, inshallah. Secret. Okay, let's keep it secret, inshallah, that way. But, But you know, in this trip, we learned a lot. Uh, there were a lot of historical places. Um, important for us as muslims and um, and definitely important for all human being because history is a very interesting subject whether you believe in those personalities or you don't you follow them or you don't if they are historical personalities and history is your subject then those personalities are also important for you so this is a country where uh, people should come should visit and they need a lot of time to discover the whole country So uh, a lot of people come and they just stay in Istanbul and they go back uh, to their homeland. Uh, it's it's not. I mean, if you're coming to Turkey and you're just going back from Istanbul, you haven't seen anything. Exactly, Prime Minister. And by the way, I 
Alhamdulillah enjoyed your company and it was a great trip with you. I, I think Mustaf, we enjoyed your company. Yeah. Right? Um, and honestly, Mustaf, like uh, honestly speaking, uh, <laughs> I think we have we've benefited an immense amount, and I'm pretty sure the audience can say the same. Uh, we've seen places that we would have never imagined. Uh, seeing the seeing places is different, but having the experience of somebody. Uh, knowledgeable explaining everything and and those raw emotions that you get uh, like we went to so many different places Ayub alayhi salam and uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam's uh, place where he was born the, the raw emotions we, we can't explain it like it's uh, it's something that words can't say but Musab we enjoyed your company as well Barakallah feekum we'll move on to Mansur Iman and uh, we'll see what he has to say uh, at the end of this trip now inshallah yeah, Alhamdulillah, the trip was amazing. In many ways, it was beyond my expectations. We were not expecting to see all the things that we saw. Just a few things that really stood out to me. Number one was a Turkish landscape. Uh, traveling all across America, we've seen some great things. But things that we see here are no less beautiful than what we see back home. There's gorgeous, amazing roads, amazing mountainsides. And it's been a really, really, really beautiful road trip that we did across Turkey. Two things that really, really stood out to me. Number one was when we visited the grave of Jalaluddin al-Rumi, rahimahullah ta'ala. Um, not being from Tasawwuf background myself, when I first went there and I s stood in front of that grave, I felt such power and emotion and goosebumps that I've never felt, uh, felt before. Like uh, you could feel the Jalal, you could feel the awe that he had, mashallah. And that really, really stood out to me. And now speaking about it is giving me goosebumps, <clears throat> just thinking about it even. And the second was when we went to visit the grave of Ayyub alayhi salam, potentially one of the spots that has been uh, disclosed by the ulama. As we went there and it was locked, the mazar was locked and we were afraid that we would never make it. And we got inside and we prayed salah right next to the grave of Ayyub alayhi salam, Maghrib salah. I know, and the more. And when Sheikh Dawood recited by you, by Isnada yeah, Rabbah. I started crying. Oh. That was, good. That was that perfect was the, timing. That was the perfect timing, mashallah. Oh, Alhamdulillah. <clears throat> and then and after. Just imagine, an Im the Imam is reciting by you, by Isnada Rabbah, and you, by Isnada Rabbah, is right there. And, and Muslim, not only that, just the way things worked out. We got there and we were late. <laughs> yes. It was closed. Then we went back, we went back downstairs to the masjid, uh, spoke to him, spoke to the Imam, he gave us access. We were happy enough to get access. We prayed. After praying, he opened the chamber. Exactly. And when he did that, that was... That That's what I was going to mention. That. That's what I was going to mention is that we were just standing there. We're not expecting when he opened the sunduk, the box to the... I thought he was just going to take out something from inside. But he just opened and he showed us inside that grave. Yeah, and I think, I think our audience won't understand what, what do you mean by the box. So can you explain that? So the grave is actually underground. And they make a wooden uh, box or a casket over the top that they cover with all the colorful robes and stuff that you guys see. But the real grave is in the ground underneath. So what we see when you go it's to these six, graves... six to seven feet down. Yeah. yeah. So when you see the box, it's not the grave actually. So when he opened that little door, then we could peek inside. That's in the video, I think. We have that on video. Yeah. So you could peek inside of the grave and see exactly where Ayub alayhi salam is resting yes. and that really really stood out to me and just last thing before we go is that our life was made so much easier by having a, the local brother Nuruddin with us may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him I really wanted to just mention him one time yes yes he was he was a great help mashallah great help. now we'll ask uh, Mufti Dawood for some closing remarks inshallah and some on a review of your trip inshallah first of all uh, going last, uh, I feel a little overwhelmed having such <laughs> Mufti Asir, Mufti Hamas and Mu'a Sulaiman speak. But uh, uh, you couldn't have said it better. The way Mufti, the, what Mufti Yasser mentioned about, about it being such an historical, an epically historical place. History, is, is, it repeats itself and we take lessons from history. Not only was it educational from that aspect and having Mufti Yasser uh, just uh, right? Just, it just added to that beyond measure. Right? If you know, if someone were to come and just simply look at these athar on its own, that would be sufficient. But to have Mufti Yasser with us, that would that is that is a that is something that I can't express in words. Right? And the educational experience, 
and the emotional roller coaster, the emotional, this wasn't just a journey that we just, you know, we spent together. It was an educational journey and it was also an emotional journey that we had together. And this emotional journey allowed us to learn the emotions that one should feel as a Muslim. Like the fire of Iman that one should have within his heart. And that I really felt that when I was at the, at the birthplace of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. And we were praying Salatul, I believe Salatul Asr over there. And as I was praying, you know, in the, in the, where Ibrahim alayhi salam was born, that area is slightly flooded. There's a, there's a spring of water there. So it is said that Ibrahim alayhi salam and his family, his mother, they moved to where the masjid currently is. And as, as I was praying, it occurred to me that it may just be that I'm doing sajda where Ibrahim alayhi salam once stood. Exactly. Imagine that what it is, what tabi'u millata Ibrahim Hanifa, and we are able to do sajda on those athar. So really, I can go on for hours and hours just to list the emotion after emotion, thought after thought that we were able to experience and feel, but uh, I'll suffice with this, inshallah. Jazakumullahu khairan. One thing I would like to add, in this country, mashallah, wherever you go, even if it's a population, a very, very small population, five, ten homes, you will always see a masjid there. Its minaret will be the tallest uh, infrastructure in the town. And in multiple places, for example, in Kunia, we were staying in our room and from our room, we were on, I, I believe, 11th floor. So from the 11th floor, we were able to see pretty much the whole town. And I was trying to count how many uh, minarets were there. So you could easily see that uh, 30 plus masajid were in front of you. 30 plus masajid. Here, mashallah, it's a, it's a huge city and there are so many minarets that you cannot even see from here. Uh, but still, if you, you can easily count around uh, 15 to 20 masajid, uh, even at this time in this darkness. So masajid are everywhere. There is no way. Even if you want, you can miss your salah. It's not possible in this country. Uh, masajid are clean, they are neat, and we see people, they are very regular, mashallah, and punctual in their salawat, which is a very, very good sign. This country is clean. Uh, if you travel across the state from one city to another city, there are service areas on the highway. We come from all of us, we live in America. And people give example of America's cleanliness, but America, I don't think is anywhere closer to, in terms of cleanliness, to some of those places where we have been. So, mashallah, this, is a, this was a very, very amazing uh, experience. Uh, we went to Top Copy, uh, a lot of good things, but a few things that I liked the most, or I would say I was surprised when I saw the sword of Ja'far Tayyar, mm -hmm. it was huge heavy and I was thinking you know how he was holding that sword and we were blessed to see the sword of uh, you know Abu Bakr Siddiq and Umar ibn al-Farooq, Umar al-Farooq and Usman ibn Affan and Ali ibn Abi Talib anhum Many lands were conquered uh, by these swords and Khalid ibn al-Walid radiyallahu an, Sayyifullahi fil ars, how can we forget his name? So mashallah these were the few things that when you go there and when you see those things uh, you just go back in history and if you have read some of those stories from the history books as if you're living that experience so uh, it, it was it was a great journey mashallah I still remember when I the first day when we came here to Istanbul we went to Hagia Sophia and we uh, had the honor to pray Salatul Isha over there it was a great great experience because I was thinking I came here uh, after Hagia Sophia was converted into masjid again uh, for the first time. Mm. Two, I, I believe two years ago it was converted into masjid. Before that, last time when I visited, it was just a church. So it was a great feeling uh, when I was praying in that masjid. And I was thinking, this, this thought was coming in my mind when I was sitting, waiting for the salah, that mashallah, Muslims, they have, once they declared a place, a masjid, they, they know that it will remain a masjid. It may turn into uh, different things and it might have been used for different purposes, but it's always a temporary thing. Maybe after 100 years or 200 years or 500 years, one day it will come back to its original status. So this is a very, very important lesson. Inshallah, Qurtuba is waiting. Qurtuba will become a masjid one day. Inshallah. 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 
Muslims go there, it's a church, they have converted into a church without Muslims permission. And even if you want to pray two rakat there, they don't allow. Uh, this is what I have I've heard from uh, visitors. But Qurtuba, Jamia Qurtuba in Spain will become once again a masjid, just Inshallah. like it used to be before. Inshallah. And there are many places uh, across the world that, um, you know, masajid were demolished there, uh, whether by the, with the help of uh, uh, authorities, government and courts. Inshallah, one day, uh, those masajid will be reclaimed, will, those masajid will be uh, built again. And from those masajid, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name will be raised, inshallah. inshallah. So, Zakal Khair Mufsa, once again, I don't think there's anything left to say after that. Mufsi Dawood, Zakal Khair, Mansuliman, Zakal Khair. Just one thing that I'll add, and, and we'll, uh, we'll finish it off here, is that, you know, um, like Mufti Saab said, uh, it's, it's a really amazing feeling. So to the audience, I, I would say to the audience, I, we really hope that you enjoyed, but at the same time, you learned something from this video. And I will encourage the audience that if you ever get a chance to travel, then travel these Muslim lands. Because, you know, uh, you, not only that you're traveling, you're enjoying, you're on vacation, but at the same time, there's an uplift in your Iman. There's that boost that you get in your Iman. Today, uh, we were standing in front of the grave of Sultan Muhammad Fatih, he conquered the city that you see behind us right here at the age of 20 or 21 years old. And it's, it's just that, that the Muslim youth, when they see it, they understand that that's the greater purpose that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought us into this world for. And inshallah, um, this, is, this might be an end to this journey, but, it's the, but, it's, but it is a start to many more journeys to come inshallah. Uh, many more Muslim lands to show the Muslim world and the rest of the world. And as Mufti Saab said, if uh, Muslims have claimed something once, they never let go of it. It will always come back. Um, it could come back later, but it, it will always come back inshallah. And we'll finish off with that. We hope you guys enjoyed this travel vlog and this podcast. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.